we have our discovery hubs and our curated lists. So we have Awesome Self Hosted, Awesome Home Lab, Lib Hunt, Docker Hub. So we're gonna go over each of these in each section, just kind of get a little bit of familiarity with each. So. Howdy right, folks, Zach Perry back here again with 45 Home Labs. So I'm gonna keep things a little more casual um, for this video here. I just wanted to go over some of the tools that I currently use for you know finding new home lab projects, um, general learning, technical guides, et cetera, et cetera. So this is by no means an exhaustive list. It's just some of the ones that I use and peruse um, uh, on a regular basis there. So we'll just go over a few. I put them into a few categories here. So we have our discovery hubs and our curated lists. So we have Awesome Self Hosted, Awesome Home Lab, Lib Hunt, Docker Hub. So we're gonna go over each of these in each section, just kind of get a little bit of familiarity with each. So. Starting with Awesome Self Hosted, that is a GitHub page, which let's see, we'll go over here. There we go. So we can see here we have quite a few things in our table of contents. So, I mean, projects uh, all the way from time tracking, remote access, like Rust Desk, like I'm using a remote into my home server, uh, setting up wikis, ticketing systems, like home lab, business. Uh, educational, there are just a ton of projects that you can deploy within this, uh, using this tool. But uh, if you don't wanna go through the GitHub page, they also have a HTML version, which has a search function, a little bit of uh, easier way to navigate around. So let's actually take a look at some of the things here. Let's just ooh, all the way down. So you can see we have a some file sharing, shelf, assets and equipment tracking software. So this is what I mean by there is tools not only for home lab, but businesses, uh, large and small. You don't need to go down the proprietary route for any of these things. There are a lot of great self-hosted self things that you can use. But going into a little bit more of the home lab territory, we have Awesome Home Lab. And this is one I actually discovered pretty recently. Um, so within this, it's one laid out very, very well. Love the look at this website, but you can search for things from security, storage, collaboration. So let's see what we have in a few of these. We have AI, automation. Uh, let's see what's in automation actually. So again, we have a lot of e-commerce, business, personal, things that you can deploy, cockpit project, which is what our Houston module is built on top of, uh, running on Rocky Linux and Ubuntu. Then we have Nextcloud, which is something else we use quite frequently. Let's see, monitoring, which that's a video I plan on doing in the future, but uh, this kind of really rings home on why this video is gonna take a while because I wanna go over the different types of monitoring that are available, but this is a very small list of the things that are out there. These are just dashboards to be honest, but when you go into monitoring, let's see what we have. We have net data, we have Prometheus, Grafana, we have glances, there's so, so many here. Then media, you know, media management. So of course we're gonna have things like Plex, Jellyfin, LiDAR, uh, Radar, all the ARR suites, I guess you would call it. Um, then let's go to LibHunt. So another one that is relatively new to me here. Uh, this is kind of just taking a bunch of projects from GitHub here. You can search by, you know, the amount of mentions, top projects, et cetera. So things like Visual Studio Code, um, you can search by popular topics. So if you don't want to search directly on GitHub itself, you just like a different way to search, get some different info. This is a great tool here. And the last one I'm sure the majority of people are going to be familiar with is Docker Hub. So this is going to just be a curated list of all the Docker ca containers that are available. Um, mind you, we won't spend too much time on this because this is a video in itself. So all the things that I've talked about so far, there's gonna be a Docker container for 100%. But we'll move on from there and we'll go back into our next actual category, which will be, I have the memory of a goldfish, so I already forget. I believe that is going into guides and tech, blogs and technical guides, pretty good. So first one we're gonna look at is virtualization how-to. Fantastic website, been using it for a long time. So there is a lot of great stuff when it comes to 
um, obviously virtualization, so things like Proxmox, setting it up in your home lab. Uh, it has a lot of, I'm a sucker for those kind of videos that are like, videos or articles that say, oh, five projects you can do in a weekend on your Proxmox host, or uh, five uh, things you can do in the afternoon to uh, really empower your home lab environment. So, I mean, this website just has everything that I'm looking for here. Um, should have an ad blocker on here just because it is uh, obscuring things a little bit, but let's take a look here. So we have run your home lab infrastructure uh, as code like a boss, um, Docker networking tutorial, which I don't know about everybody else, but when it comes to Docker networking, that is something that, I mean, still it gives me a little bit of like, oh man, do I have this set up right? Do I have it? It's supposed to be host or bridge or my ports inside of the container outside, are they correct? Like. It, it's a mess. Networking is definitely not my strongest suit, but um, it's tools like this that help me get better, learn more, break things, fix them, and why I love actually um, using these things. So, like I mentioned, I like using the Proxmox, you know, level up this weekend, blah, blah, blah. So, this is one that I actually have that it's the newest one that's out there. I'm going to use it this weekend. So, we have Packer, so using Linux and Windows VMs with templates with Packer. Um, that is one I've never heard of, and I'm just thinking, I'm like, okay, well, we have a template function within Proxmox and everything, so I'm uh, just wondering how this will uh, kind of tie into that. So it's one of those things, like, get a little more familiarity with it, gives you all the steps, run down one by one, makes things very easy, takes the guesswork out, uh, setting up a Proxmox backup server, so that one I've already done. This one is actually going to be a future video, so deploying a self-hosted AI with Olama and OpenWebUI with GPU pass-through. Um, I don't know a ton about setting up self-hosted AI. Uh, one of the things I like about this channel uh, and doing things on it is that I can learn about it and uh, present it to you know a wider community and they can tell me, oh, you set this up horribly and I can learn from that. So that is one of the good things there. But let's see. so. TrueNAS VM with disk pass-through, setting up Proxmox monitoring with Prometheus, um, and more and more. So then noted, um, this one was actually uh, recommended to me by a client that I worked with a few months back, had never heard of it, and one that I really wanted to sh shout out. As far as I know, this is all curated. This website is self-hosted by one person named Jeremy. Um, they have fantastic articles. Again, website looks fantastic. When I did the Proxmox helper script video, it was actually this article right here that I used for it. Um, also links to Techno Tim, who we're going to get into here in a little bit. Great content. Uh, let's look a little bit further down. So they have quite a bit here. I mean, setting up Wi-Fi mesh systems. It's not just tools. It's also hardware. It's setting up different open source tools, and there is just a ton and ton and ton of stuff that you can get into. Next, it's FOSS. This is more of just a news aggregate, and it does have you know, uh, resources, a community, li community link, YouTube channel, etc. but I use this for any more recent news, so if something with a new distro of Ubuntu is changing, I'll probably see the information here, like, yeah, wget removed from Ubuntu server 25.10 default install. Um, I use wget a lot, so when eventually I transition to Ubuntu uh, server 25, that is going to be some information I'll have in my back pocket. Not the end of the world, because I mean, it's going to tell you, hey, you don't have this installed, do you want to install it? But it's good to know. Then we have Linux Handbook here, so this is one that I use because it has a lot of great articles, learning uh, and teaching applications to it. Um, you can look at their latest tutorials here. So it's been a little bit, a few months since I've looked at their website, but they go a little bit deeper than the educational uh, and the, um, most of the ones we've looked at have been more application centric right now, but this one is actually going in under the hood of Linux, filtering journal CTL by logs, um, self-hosting Obsidian, I love anything with Obsidian, um, using Bash Declare. So, I mean, it does get a little bit deeper here. Um, there's also some books available. So, they are at a, um, they are charged for that. But 
I uh, haven't personally used any, but they do have a lot of free resources that are, that are great here. And we can look at some of their learning resources. So I'm a big Vim user. Um, I know some people are gonna have their pitchforks up for that. Um, and there's always gonna be that one person in there who's like, I use Emacs, which that's fine. That's fine. I'm not gonna say anything. But so we can see here, you know, little article on here, a lot of tips, um, kind of a repository on navigating Vim, which can be a little bit daunting when you first get into it here. Um, then the last thing we'll cover for guides and technical resources is a big one. When I first started on the one, the enterprise side of being a solution specialist at 45 drives, but especially when I get into the, when I set up my own home lab and when I started doing these YouTube videos. So that is, everybody here is gonna know Techno Tim. He is by far one of my favorite tech YouTubers. Um, all of the um, guys that I've used are, um, our products there, you know, Techno Tim, Craft Computing, Learn Linux, uh, so on and so forth. I'm not gonna name them all, it'll be quite a while, but the way he structures these videos, and one, he does the videos, I'm a visual learner, so videos are great, but I also like having, you know, the step-by-step -step, uh, guide to actually, okay, just copy and paste, I can learn a little bit more about it. So that's one thing I really like about his, um, the way he does everything. So his image um, video that he did, this was a 43 minute video. Uh, I love how in depth he went on it. I don't have the attention span to listen to a 43 minute video um, in one go. And that's my fault because it is a fantastic video. I had to watch it in a few chunks, but he actually details everything here very beautifully on what you need to do. Uh, go through step by step explains it all, and obviously there's gonna be more detail in the video, you can actually see what it's doing here, but this is the perfect kind of companion to go along with the, with the video itself. See, very, very um, uh, well laid out here, and you can get all those links, everything like that, if you wanna buy a little uh, um, rubber duck, I have one of them, so uh, not, a, not an affiliate link, just it's a nice little thing, yeah, cut that part out. <laughs> The, uh, but last thing we'll cut here is the, let's see, our communities and forums. So it's just gonna be a bunch of Reddit communities. There's forums within some of the things that I've covered already that are um, more focused in on those actual websites, on those communities. Um, these ones here are more still going into applications, but they are dealing with hardware as well. Um, one that is very new to me that I really wanna start getting more into is the Minilab subreddit. Um, let's bring that up here real quick. And let's see, let's see, right here and here. So we have our Minilab right here. And this is just gonna be, it's like regular home lab, but on a much smaller scale. So let's see what some people have set up here. So I lied to our slash home lab, that's pretty good. The, um, so Minilab here, we can see that looks like a Zima board in there. Is that what that is? But it is usually gonna be in like a Raspberry Pi rack, something like that, or that's fantastic. I love when home labs, uh, when racks have wood accents like this and everything, it just looks so crisp. But we can see here, storage rack, um, that's fantastic. Medieval looking uh, storage rack in the closet. Um, but I won't spend too much time on this. We can, okay, that one's in a suitcase. That's pretty cool. But anyways, Travel Lab 2.0, that's sick. Uh, next, we'll go to Home Lab, which is the big brother um, of the Mini Lab form. Ever, again, a lot of people watching this video are gonna be familiar with that. Um, we're going on a much bigger scale here. So people are running their, you know, their entire infrastructure either in their home, which Sometimes it looks more like it's a medium to large scale business. It's just crazy to me. But you get a lot of ideas of how people are running things, what they're doing on it, and it can provide a lot of ideas, a uh, lot of resources on you know hardware to purchase, and you know a lot of great things. And a lot of these are going to be you know newer hardware things like that. But of course, there's going to be things like I'm running this on an old Dell server, um, which is kind of what Home Lab's all about. And then we have our open source subreddit. So various open source software, some that is well known, like only Office, uh, some that are gonna be people that are just building them at the time. They want uh, people to try them out, see what they are. 
and get some recognition on them, etc. But this is a great little uh, community here to kind of see what people are coming up with, see how they made it, etc. So I haven't spent too much time on this one. Again, it's one that I've uh, kind of recently discovered, which is kind of funny because it's r slash open source. You think that'd be one of the first ones that I would know about, but. And the last one we'll cover here is home server. So this is gonna be small to medium businesses. Uh, this one here, I haven't used it too much, but it is one that I did want to note there. So it is asking, you know, going over a lot of questions, great place to, you know, look at other people's setups here, kind of similar to home lab and mini, uh, mini labs here. So just in a few different niches. And then of course, you know, I'd be remiss here if I didn't mention our 45 home lab forum. So we'll go over here and we'll go to our forum where you can get a lot of questions answered on, you know, 45 drives, uh, 45 home lab products like, um, will this um, will this CPU, will this GPU fit? Uh, what are the current temperatures? What's this? Look, and people just showing off their 45 Home Lab products. So it's a great little community. I recommend uh, jumping in. There are people from, including myself, uh, but from our service team uh, that are answering questions, um, that are part of that open source community there that just like to get involved. But with that said, that is kind of everything I have to show today, kind of a shorter video, but it um, just highlights some of the tools that I'll use to, you know, do research, learn uh, what looks cool that might be a good video, what's trending right now. Uh, and the other reason I kind of wanted to do this video is because one, uh, I didn't have to write a script for it, so that is good on my part. But the other thing is I would really like to know down in the comments what everybody uh, is using for, you know, these kind of things. So um, learning, um, resources, any other subreddits that might be, uh, might be interesting to learn from. So let me know that in the comments down below. Uh, you can also find all of our socials down in the description along with all of the websites that I've talked about today. Um, if you wanna see what we have on offer, head on over to store.45homelab.com. And with that said, I will see you all in the next video. Have a good one.